Welcome to the Health One recording sessions uh, 2015. Uh, we're introducing some of the features of Health One version 7.5. You can get this version by clicking Help and About, and you will see the version you're on. Help, About, and if you have version 7.5 which is distributed in January 2015, you will have these features. This evening I'm going to show you some uh, new functions that have been introduced to do with cardiovascular and uh, chronic kidney disease risk. But before I do that, I want to show you one, or one very small little change we've made to the family tab up on the top left. In this case, we have added the phone number and the date of birth. Up to now, it was just the phone number in this column. We hadn't enough space to have the two of them, so we have an option to have the phone number or the date of birth displayed here of each family member. So currently, we have the date of birth displayed. And if I just point at any one of the dates of birth, you can also see the patient's phone number, phone number 086, phone number 087 tools options you can change this the default uh, thing to appear there tools options other enable family circle display the date of birth for the family member instead of the phone number or just the phone number by unticking that in which case you will display if I refresh it you see it's displaying the phone number and if I point at it now you should also see the date of birth of each member of the family. It's just a small thing that was asked. The major thing I'm dis de demonstrating this evening are the trends. We've changed the trends around a good bit to enable us to include in them some risk scores. And we've included these risk scores on the top left of the trends tab. The values are down here, the same as always. But up on the top, we have included here various cardiovascular risks and I can right click on any of this and just go to configure and normally by default you will just see displayed maybe the, the uh, original uh, European Society for Cardiology score called the SCORE cardiovascular risk. If you double click on this as has always been the case you will see your risk score based basically on the patient's smoking status, age and sex and systolic blood pressure and cholesterol. And you can or not save the score in the current transaction. Let's just do that for this patient. This has always been available. And this score, the ESE score, basically estimates the risk of a fatal cardiovascular event in the next 10 years. However, there has been a request for several other scores, so we've included some of the more commonly used ones. So if you right click and go down to configure, you can add, and I'll add them all in, the Framingham and the Cure Risk score for the moment, and I'll just go through each of these. So these are added to your uh, Trends tab now. So the Framingham Risk score is an updated version of the original one we had up here, which is also a Framingham Risk score, and we left it there for those of you who want to stay with it. The Framingham risk score has been updated in 2008 uh, to take into account more than was originally done. So you can do this score, it's a 10 year risk now of any cardiovascular event, not of just a heart event but a stroke or any cardiovascular event. And it is normally based on the systolic blood pressure, smoking status, diabetic status and you can normally use the lipid values if you have them, the cholesterol and the HDL. If you don't have these, you can use the BMI as a secondary option, if you like, as a risk calculator. So you calculate and you get the risk is greater than 30% in this particular patient. So you get a little graph here to say this is your risk, this is your ideal risk, and this is your average risk for somebody of your age. We also have down here in this tab medical information which gives you a description of what this risk score is all about. And you can save or not the scores into the current transaction. So if I pro 
goals, in this case they will be saved. And you can see that the primary risk score is greater than 30%, and the optimal risk for a patient of this age is actually 10%. <coughs> so this patient is at high risk. So the Q-risk score is based on an English uh, system uh, and English data. Uh, and this is a 2014 calculator. And again, it's based on age and sex and race, smoking status, diabetic status, and you can change these as you go on. It's a, it's a live calculator. Has the patient had a heart attack, angina, and stroke? If they have, then this calculator becomes inoperable. It's irrelevant because our risk is extremely high. First degree relatives, chronic kidney disease, atrial fibrillation, on blood pressure treatment, rheumatoid arthritis, and you'd add those in, and you would then display the cholesterol HDL ratio, systolic blood pressure, patient's height, weight, and BMI. So we calculate it as 22.9, and again save the score, the consultation, just for the, to view it, and just the risk of having a heart attack within the next 10 years is 22.9%. So these, you, some people would prefer to use one or the other. So I'm going to do the final risk score, which is by going right-clicking and configuring and adding the EGFR or the chronic kidney disease score, which is a brand new development based not only on the patient's EGFR and creatinine, but also on their albumin creatinine ratio in the urine, which should be done in all patients who have hypertension or diabetes or are at risk of kidney disease. So again, you have the age and sex of the patient's weight, creatinine, and their albumin creatinine ratio as done by a urine specimen on the 1st of the 1st, 2015. Their creatinine clearance, we've included this because this is often needed for um, prescribing drugs. It's often still used for some drugs. The EGFR, again, is 58.3, and the risks of the EGFR are down the left-hand side here. So greater than 90, 60 to 90, 89 is mild reduction, but only if you have other signs of kidney disease. 45 to 59 is called uh, mild to moderate, so that would be a G1, G2, G3A, G3B, G4, and G5 is kidney failure. So if you combine this with the ACR values, you can see that his ACR at 13.2 is quite high risk. So he's here, this patient is at this risk. Again, we have some medical info here which just explains how we came about these, um, this information and you can again store this in a patient file. And because we are doing this in this particular way, we can now do a, a lot of um, evaluation and analysis in Health One as regards patients who have got a particular cardiovascular risk. So that is an overview on the Trends tab in Health One in version 7.5 where we have some new cardiovascular risk scores and a chronic kidney disease risk score. And you can use whichever of them you like. And you can double click on this to not display them. Otherwise, the trends are the same as they always were. And you can right click and um, uh, print your results, export to Excel, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, that is the end of this video. Thank you very much.